Welcome to our review on Energy Analysis with Forces 2. So we're now going to have a look at a different situation to our previous video. We're going to start by looking at a braking system. So when you apply brakes, you're exerting a force on that vehicle, which results in energy being transferred from the kinetic store to the thermal store. So if we consider our physical situation, first of all, we're starting off with a moving car and the surroundings are quite cool. And then we're going to end with a stationary car and warmer surroundings. And in order to bring that transfer about, then the brakes are exerting a force over a distance. So when we come on to do our energy analysis, we're talking about the kinetic store and the thermal store. So we can fill in our kinetic stores, got a reasonable amount of energy to start with, and the thermal store only a very tiny amount. And then in the end scenario, the kinetic store is empty and that energy has been transferred to the thermal store. So remember that the total in our thermal store must be the same height as the thermal and kinetic from the left added together. The transfer here, because it's brakes exerting a force over a distance, it's mechanical, but we also have the heating of particles and the heating by radiation. When we come on to look at the kind of calculation question you could be asked, I've given you an example here. A drag racer comes to a stop over a distance of 50 meters, calculate the force exerted by the brakes. The energy in the kinetic store before braking is 1.2 times 10 to the 6 joules. So the first thing we need to do is think about which equation we're going to be using. So we've got a distance, we're talking about a force, and we've got energy. So it's work done. So work done is force times distance. We need to rearrange that to make force the subject. So force is work done divided by distance. Read back in our question, we've got 1.2 times 10 to the 6, that's our work done, and divide back by the distance of 50 gives us our answer of 24,000 newtons. The second scenario we're going to look at is what happens with situations involving springs. So I've given you the example here of a gymnast in the air above a springboard and then compressing the springboard momentarily as the end point. So our physical situation at the beginning is an uncompressed spring and a gymnast running and jumping. The end situation is a compressed spring and a stationary gymnast at a lower height. So the transfer there is going to be the gymnast exerting a changing force over a distance. Coming on to the energy analysis, we should be able to identify that we've got three different stores involved here. We're talking about a spring, therefore elastic store comes straight in. A gymnast is running, kinetic, and jumping, gravitational. So as soon as you see things that are off the ground, gravitational, things that are moving, kinetic. So we've got our three boxes there. We can fill in the fact that the spring is uncompressed, so the elastic store has no line in it, it's empty. Kinetic and gravitational have some. We've got a mechanical transfer because we've got a changing force over a distance. And then in our end result, the kinetic store is empty because the gymnast is stationary. We're at a lower height, so the gravitational store is reduced. And the total from the kinetic and the gravitational that we've now lost is actually transferred to the elastic store. So you just add them up and put that overall height in there. Obviously, when we are talking about reality, the gymnast will not reach the same height as their original jump because some of the energy is transferred to the thermal store of the surroundings due to air resistance and sound. So we could add additional boxes onto there, but let's keep it simple at the moment. An example of the kind of calculation question we could get with regard to springs is given here. Calculate the energy transfer to the elastic store of the springboard if the spring compresses by 30 centimeters and the spring constant is 35 kilonewtons per meter. So first thing you should be noticing in there that we've got 30 centimeters and 35 kilonewtons per meter. So those are not our standard units. So first thing, convert to standard units. Centimeters into meters and kilonewtons into newtons. So what we need to do is 30 divided by 100 gives us 0.3 meters and our spring constant becomes 35,000 newtons per meter. 
Then because we are talking about springs, we need to be recalling our formula for our energy is 0.5 times the spring constant times the extension squared. And then we can just substitute in those values we've worked out. So 0.5 times 35,000 times by 0.3 squared gives us our final answer of 1,600 joules. Even if you are one of these people who's not 100% certain about this, even if you just did the converting, you may well get a mark. And remember with all these calculations to always write down each step of your working, maybe in a logical manner rather than just scribbling it randomly around the page because that does an examiner's head in. Remember they only get paid approximately one pound per script after tax has been taken off. So they're not gonna be spending hours working out what on earth you've done. Make it simple, you'll make them happier. So set it out nice and logically, write down all of your working, and that way, even if you fail to use your calculator at the last point, you will still get some of the marks on the question. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can analyze situations involving braking and draw energy analysis diagrams for them. You can also carry out calculations about the forces. You should be able to analyze situations involving springs, draw an energy analysis diagram for them, and carry out related calculations.